Ahoy mateys. At this point, just accept it. You know the deal already. We're talking about SpongeBob. Over the years, we watched SpongeBob SquarePants as we let him into our homes. He practically became an unsung hero. But like any hero, there are villains. And SpongeBob had many. Come with me as we rank all of SpongeBob's villains. But just as a side note, we're gonna rank all of the main villains. Now, if I miss a couple, I do apologize. Leave them in the comments down below. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Number 15, the Tattletale Strangler. Yeah, you know this guy. He first popped up on the scene in season three, episode 20, SpongeBob meets the Strangler. SpongeBob caught a guy littering who turned out to be the Tattletale Strangler, turns him into the police and he's arrested. He later escapes custody and disguises himself as SpongeBob's bodyguard, waiting for the perfect time to strangle him. But of course, SpongeBob annoys him and he eventually caves and he is willing to go to jail. Yeah, crazy. Number 14, Prince Triton. You remember him? Well, he first appeared in season six, episode 26, The Class of Triton. It's King Neptune's birthday and his wife throws him a party at the Krusty Krab. SpongeBob mentions Neptune's son, Triton, which saddens him, causing him to play a video showing what happened causing a separation between him and Triton and how he's locked away in a cage. SpongeBob and Patrick sets Triton free, thinking it'll cheer up King Neptune, but Triton just starts destroying Bikini Bottom just to get back at his father. King Neptune finds out about this and he's actually happy that his son finally became a god and all is forgiven, I guess. Number 13, Flats the Flounder. Flats first made his appearance in season one, episode eight and an episode titled Sandy's Rocket, but he went by a different name. He was Farley the Flatbush. Yeah, I know, weird. Well, he re-emerged as Flats the Flounder in season three, episode three, The Bully. SpongeBob and Flats are in boating school and SpongeBob introduces himself and for no apparent reason at all, Flats says, I like to kick people's butt and that he's gonna kick SpongeBob's butt. Now SpongeBob eventually gives in and accepts his fate only to realize his body can observe the punches. Flats grow tired and passes out. The good prevails. Number 12, the Alaskan bull worm. In season two, episode 20, an episode titled Sandy, SpongeBob and the Worm, first introduces our wonderful creature as a massive bullworm who's hell-bent on devouring the bikini bottom. The characters mistake in the worm for a cave that they thought that the tongue was the worm. It's also great noting that Patrick suggests taking bikini bottom and pushing it somewhere else only for the worm to fall on them, destroying the bikini bottom. Number 11, Squilliam Fancy Son III. Now he makes multiple appearances, so we're just gonna cover the character. Squilliam is an octopus who is Squidward High School rival. He is incredibly wealthy to the point that he just about appears to have everything a person would want in life. Squilliam riches, which he constantly boasts about, leads to the egotistical attitude. Now Squilliam doesn't outright attempt to antagonize anyone, rather Squidward's insecurities lead the octopus to make foolhardy displays of his supposed stance. Squilliam always get the best of Squidward, usually because his wealth allows him to get just about anything done. His evilness is on display when he rubs his privileged position in Squidward's face to make him feel insignificant. Number 10, Nosferatu. Making multiple appearances in season two, the graveyard shift, and in season 11, the night patty, Nosferatu is a vampire whose artistic style is distinct from that of other characters because he appears similar to a 3D stop motion model instead of hand-drawn animation. Like the standard vampire, he has the ability to turn into a bat. He is the night shift manager at the Krusty Krab. I know, that's crazy. Nosferatu likes blood and he tries to lure SpongeBob to him to make him a victim. He's usually harmless, but he does try to audition for evil Nosferatu is also responsible for scaring Spongebob and Squidward by secretly encouraging the story of the hash-slinging slasher. He turns the lights on and off just to scare the two. Number 9, The Dirty Bubble. He also makes multiple appearances in Season 1, Season 3, and Season 7. Now, The Dirty Bubble is quite literally, well, a dirty bubble. One of the foals of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, he floats around underwater avoiding pointy objects that could burst him. He is a bubble who is evil for the sake of, well, just being evil. The dirty bubble wants to make everything dirty like him and spread his dirtiness by landing over someone or something and sucking them in to contaminate them. 
He's also teamed with Man Ray against Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, becoming one of the members of the villainous Evil Club. <laughs> Number eight, Bubble Bass. Now you knew we got to talk about him. He makes multiple appearances in season one, one being the most infamous episode, Pickles. Bubble Bass convinces SpongeBob that he got his order wrong so he can get free meals. Whenever the character is the designated villain, he manages to come up with lies that trick SpongeBob into providing him things he wants but he didn't earn. He doesn't care about landing other people in trouble if it benefits him and preys on the naive individuals he can easily fool. Number seven, Kevin C. Cucumber. Just as the name implies, he's a sea cucumber, a mean-spirited, rude individual. He's the leader of the Jelly Spotters, a jellyfish enthusiast club. Kevin doesn't actually know anything about jellyfish. He became popular only because of his sense of fashion, making his first appearance in season two, episode 10, I'm Your Biggest Fanatic, where SpongeBob was obsessed with Kevin and Kevin is just being rude to him and he doesn't even know how to jellyfish. He puts SpongeBob through a series of tests that he ultimately passes. Kevin ends up being exposed as a coward and the jellyfish spotters ends up favoring SpongeBob. Number six, the Flying Dutchman. Now the Flying Dutchman is a human ghost who was once a pirate. He is frightening to anyone he comes across. He is capable of remarkable supernatural powers such as shape-shifting, reality manipulation, and claiming souls. He makes multiple appearances, yet the most notable episode being season two, episode 13, Shanghai. The Dutchman intends to haunt people whenever he feels like it, whether he's bored or in a bad mood. He forces SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward to be a part of his crew. And when the trio comes aboard on the Dutchman's ship, his main mission is to steal someone's soul. Number five, Karen. She makes multiple appearances. Karen is a supercomputer. Well, she's Plankton's wife and co-owner and chef of the chum bucket much like her husband she is one of the show's main antagonists because the restaurant has no customers karen dedicates most of her time to scheming with plankton instead although she's a computer karen has a sentiment personality i mean she and plankton does have a son together yeah that's wild karen aids plankton in his mission to steal the krabby patty secret formula usually coming up with plans that Plankton later executes. Karen also contributes to her husband's villainous persona. She isn't pleased when he seems to turn over a new leaf and actually encourages him to stick to his evil ways. Number four, Man Ray. He makes multiple appearances involving Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Man Ray, a spoof of the Aquaman villain Black Manta, is a humanoid whose helmet is shaped like a manta ray. He doesn't have a head underneath. I mean, wow. He's a stereotypical baddie with a big eagle who goes on villainous rants and possesses the ability to shoot lasers and he occasionally flies. Man Ray wants to be in control of the world. Much like comic book villains, he's been part of different bad guy groups such as Evo. He doesn't have a particular agenda apart from wanting to be the biggest threat alive. Although Man Ray does go up against Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy who frequently try to foil his plans. Number three, Dennis. Most notable, obviously, from the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Dennis is one of the main villains in the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, where he's hired as a hitman by Plankton to get rid of SpongeBob and Patrick. He's a ruthless mercenary who displays superhuman abilities like extreme durability, strength, and the strange power to grow a mustache on command. That's pretty cool. Dennis doesn't have an evil agenda of his own. Rather, Plankton wants Dennis to prevent SpongeBob and Patrick from retrieving King Neptune's crown. Number two, Doodle Bob. Now who doesn't love Doodle Bob? Making his first appearance in season two, episode 14, Frank and Doodle. Doodle Bob is the manifestation of a magical pencil used by SpongeBob and Patrick. As a result, he is a doodle of SpongeBob. He speaks an unintelligible gibberish and unlike SpongeBob, has a malicious personality. Doodle Bob is a maniacal being who lives to wreak havoc on the lives of SpongeBob and Patrick. Because he always shows up by accident and is beaten up fairly quickly, he doesn't have time to do much more than attempt to do away with SpongeBob and Patrick. Now, before we get into number one, if you made it this far and you're still watching, hit that like button and subscribe so you won't miss any more videos just like this. Finally, number one, which I'm sure you probably already knew who it was, Sheldon J. Plankton. Plankton owns the failing Chum Bucket restaurant, and he's the main antagonist of the series. 
He appears in the most number of episodes for any villain. He also has a defined backstory. He was once Mr. Krabs' best friend before disagreements between the pair that led to their ultimate estrangement. Plankton is always looking to nab the secret patty formula. His main goal is to run the Krusty Krab out of business because his own restaurant never gets any customers. He's also used dozens of different schemes to achieve his mission, such as targeting SpongeBob to manipulate his naivety. Other times his diabolical plans have threatened Bikini Bottom. Well, there you have it, folks. Every villain ranked in SpongeBob. I'm just going to go ahead and throw Mr. Krabs in there as an honorary villain. He sold SpongeBob to the Flying Dutchman for 62 cents. Once again, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, turn on post notification bells so you won't miss another video, and be sure to check out SpongeBob's most controversial episode right here.